Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is? So, I want to show you guys this book that Flat Earth British was showing on his channel, which is, I think it's a really big key. So here we have an engraving of the beginning alphabets of man. And I really love how it has like these, uh, these different stories depicting how civilization has, um, is progressing. So keep note of that as I kind of go through these. And all of this is like symbolic, um, by the way. Um, but what we're going to get to is that most of these languages and alphabets are based off of one, um, the Phoenicians, which are where, they, where it all kind of stems from. So let's go to the next page. And this is what I want to start to notice how this is starting to progress. We're starting to have, like she's pointing to civilization. You see, this is when we have, uh, looks like Jesus, really. Um, so, this is kind of the beginning of when we see, start to see these little buildings in here. And start, you know, because when we think of the Bible, I mean, what kind of buildings are we thinking they were building in biblical time? You know what I mean? Because that's really what this video is about. It's about this strange Victorian architecture that seems to be out of place all over the world so you know why don't we look at some of these old books for some knowledge on the subject right so we have we have the chaldeans here right and i find this like super interesting right we have them worshiping or sacrificing to the gods why is he showing that here you know what i mean we we, we know a lot about this right in his history how they have uh They've sacrificed or have gone, uh, the Chaldeans went very, um, pagan in their ways. Um, I think that's what they're kind of trying to symbolize here. So let's move on to the next page. And here we go. Here's where we're getting into some bigger, some bigger answers. So now we have Syria and then we also have the Phoenicians. So what is this? You know what I mean? Like, what we think of the Phoenicians, um, I don't remember, um, anything about dome buildings. Um, I remember hearing that they were very, you know, they, they sailed all, um, all on the coast of Africa to Britain and all that. And what is this about the Egyptians coming right after? Does this have anything to do with the Phoenicians? We don't really see a... Uh, race depicted or you know we just see this crazy architecture let's continue and also actually I want you to start recognizing these strange devices because this book is filled with antiquitech of like all sorts um let's go forward okay so we have the Chinese here Armenian and the Coptus, which is basically like the Greek and the e uh, uh, Egypt blending together. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get out of that. Um, and we see this little thing all over the place. We're going to see these multi-breasted, uh, weird looking uh, carvings all over the place. And I think this is uh, actually representing uh, Phoenicia. And so what he's saying is that, you know, I am alpha and omega i'm the beginning and the end and uh this is the new this is the new age this is the new beginning this is the new history that's what this whole book is it's basically uh trying to rewrite um the past civilization before and trying to make sense of it that seems what to be and also you know what kind of carving system printing system is this um, you can't really tell in this case, but let's go, let's look at some, let's look at some different examples. Um, like I said, you know, Flat Earth British made some really great points, which I just kind of want to like elaborate upon. It's like, whoever drew this is next level. Like we got these thousands 
of different individual people doing their own actions. It honestly kind of reminds me of like 3D and like computer simulation of some sort. I mean, like you hear of all sorts of types of devices in the past that were automated of some sort. And actually, you know, there's this other book where I'm going to get into that in a second, um, which will go over that. But back to what I was saying, we have this Victorian esque type buildings and what are they doing they're kind of like coming up here and it looks like they're destroying it that's what they're doing they're getting rid of this and you know what time is this well this is supposed to be the temple of solomon so this is what why this book is so important because when we go to look at what the temple of solomon looks like or it's how it's depicted in here it's depicted like some victorian modern architecture you know what i mean like is this really you know, is this really what we were capable of building you know what i mean is this what the hebrews built well the bible says that the phoenicians built this and like i said in the first video the phoenicians are the irish so the Irish built this. The Phoenicians is just a cover name. It's just like a little scapegoat. Like you're like looking at the Phoenicians, you're like following their tracks, and then, you know, you're creating a whole history for someone that never really existed. So why weren't why wasn't the Gaelic language mentioned in these languages? Do you want to know why? Because this is a Roman book. This is or supposedly, right? So what I'm thinking is that whatever, whoever wrote this or whoever came out with this information is, you know, after Tartaria or what we know as Phoenicia or the Irish or whatever you want to call it. So here's the thing. I'm speculating that the Phoenicians had some crazy tech. I found this, um this website where it's talking about some crazy inventions um uh, let's see other devices created the illusion of a talking statuary hydraulically powered mechanical music playing automata the aeolian harp which was revived and venerated by the english romantic poets and the hearing aid and the arca musaritha mica a primitive mechanical computer that would compose simple random compositions okay so let's just think about this for a second so they could create and hold on i didn't finish that writing messages in cipher calculating the date of easter on any year and designing fortifications like so what do i mean i mean we you know i remember hearing about this in school right like they used to have computers and uh you know we think about like sundials and stuff like that's so like how did these things work um well this book right here is showing you like all sorts of a, a device that creates melodies on its own a talking statue i mean I, I i just feel like we don't understand and we have these instruments um it seems like this is kind of like some palm uh palmistry kind of thing like integrating it with astrology or something that's interesting um then you have these big buildings and then like some kind of like device that i guess the talking statue comes from is this like a telephone of some sort um a study of the ear ast ast astrological references to the ear um so i start to speculate that we have all these engravings these you know this this has a specific look to it right you have all these different engraving type looks let's go back to this all right so we have all right let's look at this example you know what i mean so you like you can come in here and study this you can come here and zoom into any single one and i just wonder is it possible that maybe they had some type of auto drawing system i'm not i mean like i'm not trying to like be like super skeptical like let's just let's just be real i mean they had something that could compute musical compositions you would think if they couldn't do photography they would think of something you know and 
if they're the ones building all these buildings then i don't know these buildings are so great and so magnificent like i would assume that who knows maybe they left over some type of printing technology and the people who came and did this mass murder i mean like this is some crazy stuff here why are they doing this well there is some secret knowledge here and i believe the jews right in jerusalem whoever was left over and survived and was remaining in this magnificent temple that was created by the phoenicians right they wanted access to whatever the hebrews were hiding and that's what we know as you know the roman wars and that's what this is some crazy dark horrific stuff right but why did it happen because they didn't know what was going on all this stuff was left over all this a magnificent architecture you can see all this kind of like mud stuff what is all this it's all ruined well so is this a depiction of solomon's temple right here like this is what they're saying was in biblical times and look at what they did to an entire nation i wonder why right there's a lot of confusion here we have a depiction of the goddess diane and this is from phoenicia which obviously the romans took but let's look at where it came from so let's see this is because the cult of artemis introduced by the greeks who populated part of the coast at the beginning of the first millennium bc so this so who was the one who gave the greeks the alphabet i'm going to assume that they also gave them spiritual like concepts and symbolism so and then this is a older depiction of what now now we just have her depicted as you know with a simple tunic and it's not so um it's not so graphic so this is the older depiction of what we have in new york the statue of liberty okay and here we have an older depiction of the statue of liberty or diana this seems to be some magnetic levitation device of some sort and you'll see these strange devices and all over the place and i think they're what i think these are are symbols meaning like these engravings that we all know whatever artist or whatever created this um you know this has been kind of manipulated to be uh now kind of like an arcane symbol meaning like i don't even know if like the technology actually looked like this but now you know there's another one the fascies let's look at that let's see so here we have these instruments of torture but i think that this thing right here was some type of sonar device you could say some deadly weapon of multiple flutes tied together that could do some serious damage um do you really think this would like hurt someone i mean like it just seems kind of like uh doesn't seem like the most efficient way to make an axe right well that's what i'm trying to say is i think that this is all symbolism um somebody like n you know knew their stuff here so we have the Temple of Solomon that in the Hebrew Bible actually says was created by the Phoenicians because of their crafting abilities. You know what I mean? Which I think is just a cover up. Look at the size of this angel compared to this temple. And that's an angel. You know, we could be like even like a fourth of that. So basically this is massive so if we zoom in here we can see the astrological symbolism of the man the eagle the ox and the lion and this just all goes back to the irish so i think they call this the phoenicians right but this is really 
the Irish created this. Okay, so let's start to make some connections. In the Book of Mormonism, we have this illustration and I really want to start to tie it together because, you know, I'm, I've been looking into the Tartaria conspiracy, right? And then you start to, you start to discover that all this strange architecture has this, um, these, these similarities that keep repeating. And, you know, once you know what the Book of Mormonism is about, you could start to look for certain clues. And I think this is one of them. I'm guessing it's called the Liahona. I don't know exactly what this is called. Now, it's the orb and the cross. But I believe this is what it's based off of. Um, and the reason why is because in the Book of Mormonism, a tribe from Jerusalem is trying to escape this like harsh rule or whatever. And basically, God is telling them that they need to get out of there. And I have the quote here. Let's read it. So... And it came to pass that as my father arose in the morning and went forth to the tent door to his great astonishment, he beheld upon, he beheld upon the ground a round ball of curious workmanship, and it was of fine brass, and within the ball were two spindles, and the one pointed the way whither we should go into the wilderness. Uh, so basically what this device is, it's a, it's more than a compass. It, it points to a specific direction and somehow or another they found this and it was directing their whole family to the new world. What I'm getting to is that the Mormons knew that there was an ancient civilization that was in the Americas that built amazing structures. And I'm guessing that the Book of Mormonism is a type of propaganda for the new reset after all this stuff happened. So what we have is Salt Lake Temple and all of these major Mormon buildings being credited and, you know, saying, uh, you know, we have Wikipedia saying that this is actually built by the Mormons when really I believe it was built by these people and this strange tech that we do not understand and I'm gonna get even further into what this is but I just want to start this off with this this small little clue here and how I believe that also that this tribe that came from you know Jerusalem is actually the Phoenicians so let's kind of put that into you know let's connect the dots there so the Phoenicians built the Temple of Solomon so they have some I mean and we saw that that looked very modern correct so we can assume that their building skills were beyond what we understand the ancient world to be. Is that maybe why we don't know who they are? Is that maybe why we have that escape goat, right? Where we're, we're trying to understand who the Phoenicians were, but they're no one. They're just some made up name called the fake ones, right? It's really the Irish. And they came to America with this device trying to escape some crazy dictator and restarted and and built most of the cities that we know today. So that's just the kind of start of it, but I'm gonna explain more and get and and further proof as we go along. Okay, so I'm I'm building like little like steps for us. You know what I mean? Because like this stuff is not easy. It's, I mean like type this stuff in. It's not like there's like a step by step guide on understanding this. So it's like I'm giving you guys a little building blocks, all right? So now that we understand who the Phoenicians were, right? The Irish connection between the Tartars. That's my first video, right? Now we're going to go over crazy architecture that doesn't make sense. And this is one of the earliest maps that you can find on the internet. And it's just so telling on what, we, what we've lost, right? So let's remember, Phoenicians created the Temple of Solomon. Okay, so... We're going to see a lot of cities here, and this map is upside down, probably to cause more tar-tar confusion, right? So it's completely upside down. Over here we have uh, India, and then this is Russia, and then Europe is over here to the east, which is really, this is the west. So this is west, and then here to the left of the screen is east. So I'm still studying this. I'm still trying to understand this. But for the most part, if you look at this map and just kind of hover around, 
there's a couple big cities and we see one in Asia over here. But to me, after looking at this map, the biggest one is over here. And I do think on this map, scale counts because this must have been some type of older map that was depicting what this continent looked like a long time ago because when we come over here to Rome Roma why, why don't we see something like that this is from the 1400s Bologna we'll go into that so it's like even here so w w did this spread out this is Gallia in the past so it's like did this spread out over here to Tartaria and now we have all these insane buildings cities this is where this is the old room this is the old church this is the old empire and if they were this big on the coast you would think that they could easily just sail over to the Americas all right so let's recap Tartaria becoming a global civilization was a product of the Irish Ari spreading the knowledge to the entire world, becoming known as today's Phoenicians. I believe this Aryan race, or the civilization that followed it, possessed advanced knowledge, and I'm talking knowledge about the nature of reality, self, and magnetism. This explains why there's so many out-of-place buildings and architectures that just don't add up with the explanation of history that we're told. In the Bible, we get references of the Tower of Babel, and that there was only one language among men. Could this be why we were so advanced? Could it be that the people of this time were more passionate, you could say obsessed, with the beauty of the mind, material manifestation? Could this be what the Bible was foreshadowing to in reference to what destroyed these people? When we think of the ancient Irish, we think of the Druids. I think that was right after the flood, and with their knowledge of the magnetism, the world, and the self, we can assume that after generations that the Irish spread into East Asia. I think most of these architectures that I'm about to present have a, a similar fingerprint, or we can see similarities between all the symbolism and the way that they even built these structures. They all have a similar Victorian type feel. So let's start with the Tower of Babel. I mean, come on, do you think this is just entirely made up? The artist was inspired by something. I mean, it's one of the wonders of the ancient world. And now that we know who built the Temple of Solomon, right? Maybe we can assume that Babel was a point in time before the Irish was fully spread out. Right, where they had one language before it started to become uh, tainted, you could say. And all these people were working together willingly, passionately, to create a tower like no other. You know, and this, this kind of is ringing some bells towards all these strange architectures and the people who may have built them. I actually never had heard of this, but I found this out on John Levi's channel, really amazing channel. Let's look at this. This is Bologna from Italy in the 1700s and or what it's supposed to be. And I just didn't know that there was skyscraper type medieval buildings, I guess you could say. I just think that this is definitely uh, shows an understanding of architecture that I don't think we really like prescribe to the ancients especially you know what I mean 200 300 years ago uh, so and now we only have like 20 of these towers left and this is what it used to look like freaking incredible I'm gonna try to pick up the pace here there's so many different examples but let's look at another wonder of the world the palace of Versailles uh, there's this awesome video on the Conspiracy RS channel and it goes into all sorts of stuff like waste management and there's like so many different connections between what I'm about to say and all that. Uh, but let's just let's just keep it to the architecture. And I also found it really interesting how they were trying to put so much effort to these fountains. You know what I mean? When you look into the story of how these fountains were created and that like 
they had to make this machine and this machine is like an engineering feat that would actually like push the water all the water that they needed to actually create these mechanisms i don't know i think that's way beyond its time from the story that we're told sounds a little suspicious to me let's move on to the chicago world fair so the story is this was built just for the world fair now i again this is something that i just i did not know about this like you know like you you start to question you start to really look and do the research and then you find little details like this in history that you kind of knew about but then you start to look into it and you're like yeah like this doesn't really make sense so this looks like stone to me this doesn't look like some kind of like quick metal construction that they built over a period of 10 15 years it, it's just not making sense you know and even for the fact that they were lighting all this at this time you know what i mean with tesla's technology that's pretty amazing if the, is there if there's a conspiracy behind that i don't know was that some old tech i don't know so another out of place architecture is in nashville and i've actually been here and i did know about this but i actually until recently you know until i actually started to look into all this stuff i, I did think it was how they presented it meaning like a replica i i I don't know. I never really kind of questioned it, but I will tell you this. When I was there, I was pretty amazed at the size of these pillars, and they did look like stone to me. And I remember thinking, like, why would they have a replica? You know what I mean? Because it looks so perfect. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, I'm just, and I don't want to just buy the official store anymore. I want to ask questions. I'm not trying to state I know what the answer is. Um, we're going to get into construction photos. I know about the construction photos for uh, Nashville, but it's it's just that there's a specific trend in all those construction photos, and it's just it's just not enough for all these, you know what I mean, all these out-of-place, unexplainable mysteries. It just doesn't really add up. So, and for, you know, the new people who may not really understand exactly what I'm, you know, like hinting towards and all this stuff is like, what we know is Rome, Greece, and what we've been fed through Britain and America, that whole story is a fabrication. And I'm kind of showing an alternative theory to the world in which the Tartarian Empire, or whatever this great civilization was called, the Phoenicians, the Irish, is responsible for most of the architecture in cities in like like the base structures and not even that the foundation and like the roads and everything for Rome, France, Spain, California, New York, America and in the 18th century something crazy happened, right? And when we're told that America is founded in the 1776, right? That's really when Tartaria fell and they just are starting to, you know, get on their feet. Or, you know, there's been like a reset and they're just now kind of taking over and getting their feet settled. But we'll get, we'll, we'll get to that. So, all right. So it's more than just the architecture. I would say that's just the first clue. The next one is that a lot of these buildings have been repurposed as spiritual buildings or what we call churches. I'm not sure if that's what they were originally intended for. A lot of these churches have, again, similar patterns. They have these organs that are built into the churches and it's quite consistent. Like the architect must have taken sound vibration into consideration when making these temples. There's this artist who studies 3D visual sounds in churches. And what she's found is that in these old churches, there's these fractal-like recordings that she basically finds in the water, and she has a couple different techniques that happens when she's, you know, she make, makes different sounds in these churches. And my theory is, is that these churches were built with sound vibration, like, in mind, because they knew that it had an effect on the body and had an effect on their soul. It's like these temples would bounce sound around infinitely 
and the people who created these structures knew that that had an effect on the body i mean some of these structures are magnificent you know what i mean and the fact that they applied a spiritual significance to it the golden ratio perfect proportions and then we got to take into consideration that they took the time to decorate and add all this ornate detail adding massive sculptures just to glorify its beauty i mean this is insane and we can't even really imagine because so much has been destroyed i mean think of the map that i showed you none of that stuff is there and to the same degree think of the sculptures from the chicago fair i didn't even know about that there's this crazy book that I've actually known for a long time, but I'm just now tying it all together with all the knowledge that I'm learning now. And it's Natural Magic by Jean Baptista. There's so, I mean, like I can make so many videos off of just this one book alone, and I'm, I'm probably gonna do that. Um, but one thing specifically that I think ties in here is that there's a specific section where it mentions that and it actually is talking about Tartaria as well. But it it mentions that they used to have this brass device that would emit sound into the city. Kind of like a trumpet that would take the wind and turn it into this natural sound vibration. And again, remember what I was saying about the church? I think this affected everybody and their atmosphere and the you know the human body at this time. And I'm saying this because in this specific video of Conspiracy R Us, there's this mystery of why these buildings don't have any, like, uh, bathrooms. And I'm not really going to go into that right now, but this is, th this is definitely the start of where I'm going with that uh, conspiracy. But let's continue with just, uh, you know, engineering feats that don't make sense for right now. So we went over the machine of Versailles and how the fountains... Uh, that, 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 that doesn't really tie together for at the time when they were creating all this and that it seems like a lot of effort for them to try to like build this crazy machine to be able to uh, just you know have a display of fountains but there's also these canals in America and Peru that uh, don't really uh, add up for the time that they were created we also have railroads city plans and streets that were already here and uh, we kind of just took over and use it as a base. We also have star forts, and this is something that I did not know about until I look, started to look into this, uh, this alternative history. This is like all over America, and it's even on the Statue of Liberty. So it's like, we're not really told about this stuff. And then when we look into it, this official story doesn't add up. Like in Florida, there's a star fort and the official story is that when the settlers first came here they build built this you know this crazy uh defense for why would they even want to do it in a pentagon you know what i mean or a star shape um it's because maybe it was something else and they the settlers came and saw these different structures used them as defense forts and now we just have like the remainder of what's been eradicated i went into the mormons but i'm just gonna go over it again i think it's a really key factor when we're learning about this alternative history it's like the only kind of like source or something that we can kind of just look at and be like oh wow like this is what's put out by some officials i mean i, th I still think it was propaganda but it's kind of crazy that a, you know, a guy John Smith is putting out all this information that is kind of going along with everything that I'm saying. But it's basically about a, a guy named John Smith who was contacted by an angel named Moroni, and he's told to go dig up these golden plates in a hill nearby. So John spends like five years looking for these tablets, and eventually he finds them. And the story that's on these tablets are about. A family from Jerusalem who by God were told to venture out into the wilderness or into the new world okay and small tangent I already went into the little device thing but all these different architectures that we've been looking at and like 
if you look at them in Rome too specifically, they'll have these little like devices at the top of the steeples or at the top of, you know, the temple. And with everything that we've been learning about, we know that they've had automated machines. Uh, God is telling this family, hey, follow this ball or this device, which seems to be made of some type of mercury metal type of corporation. And also, I find it very interesting that now that device is kind of symbolic for Christianity, the ball and the cross. Why? You know, I have reason to believe that these devices were ether charging devices that created electricity. But here's the thing. It was created from the sun. I mean, think about it. These guys worship the sun and I, and I, and there's, I think there's so many different reasons why they did, but one of them is that's where they got their, that's how their technology worked. It worked based off the sun. And that's what that device is. That's what these architectures are. That's why they have all the symbolism integrated into them because, and I, I'm going to slow, slowly show this, but one of the, one of the key technologies is this device from Mormonism. So I just wanted to bring that up one more time is one of the devices that they use to somehow generate electricity, generate heat, generate something is this ball device. And it could be that maybe the reason why they're on top of the temples is just to kind of like serve as memory towards the way they got to the new land or you know maybe even to the fact that this device is the base principle of all their technology meaning it takes sun energy and converts it into electric energy okay so i'm going to go into a theory on how I believe they built such massive stone structures. And I, and I think this is like another technology and this ties in to Coral Castle. I'm going to have a lot of these links in the description and this specific engraving, I think is a key factor right now. So it tells me that this is some kind of holy sacred device that had to do with holding water and I find this really interesting because I was researching Coral Castle and I found that Edley Skolnan wrote a bunch of books on magnetism and he wrote that he found the secret of the ancients and there's there's a bunch of YouTube videos on this but there was this one guy who was talking about how what he believed that Ed was doing is he was charging the water with the sun. He would put the water in a stone basin and charge it so where the sun would separate the, the, diff the different electrons in the water, changing its magnetic uh, properties. And what he was saying is that if you put this on to a stone, right, like where you would pour this onto a stone and then you emitted a frequency, onto this water puddle that you had on the stone you could after time make it like clay to a point where it could be manipulated so what i think they could do and how they got such huge slabs of rock i'm not 100 percent on how they did everything but i'm just trying to tie in little pieces of the puzzle i believe that all these different technologies that we see in the hebrew bible the Ark of the Covenant, even this little vase that they they seem to all have in the Temple of uh, Solomon. These are different devices that the Phoenicians or the Irish used to build these structures. Okay, and that's why the Romans came in and that's why they wanted all this stuff. Right? So that they could have the power. So these devices, or this one specifically, was made for charging water and from the sun we i mean let's look at the imagery okay we see a lot of different types of symbolism here so that's enough of that let's go back to what i was talking about with the mormons because there is something else that is uh, pretty interesting so we we hear that the they leave for the new world they land in south america and this is the foundations of how the new world is started the family is 
creating a great civilization in America. And I mean, you can see in the illustrations too, like these big stone structures, which is what I find so, you know, weird or telling. Uh, but little tangent, John Smith was a Freemason, you know, back to this being propaganda. Uh, in the Book of Mormon, it actually says, though, that there was someone else there. Meaning that maybe the story that they're telling you of this tribe coming as, like, you know, uh, Jews coming into America, maybe the way they're presenting it might be accurate. But for the most part, it's interesting that they're. That in the book, they're actually saying that there was another people there this is what it says it says that i jacob had faith in christ who should come he sought much opportunity that he might might come unto me and he was learned that he had a perfect knowledge of the language of the people so this is the family that just moved into south america right or into the americas there's another person that comes in and already knew their language perfectly so i'm just gonna get skeptical here but i think whoever built these buildings must have been of a bigger stature or of what we call giants right let's think about those stories from nevada of lovelock cave right the red-haired giants i also find it interesting that there's a lot of stories of lost ships being found in the desert in my first video i go over how california used to be in an island and if you look at these maps you can actually see that there used to be a river that went into this area of Nevada this makes sense maybe these were the Phoenicians and this story that we hear of Lovelock is just some stupid cover-up right just some stupid thing to make you think that there if there was Giants there were these crazy cannibals right so it's kind of like alternative media it's like giving you what you want right just to uh, just a feud like the entertainment side of the newspaper right but at the same time they're covering something up so that's what I think that is so now that we kind of know a little bit more truth about the Mormons are we really going to believe that in the small time that they settled in America with wagons and oxen in a period of like 20 years, 30, even 40, let's just say 40 years, okay? Well, you're going to tell me that they built all these incredible temples in Utah? I don't believe it. And let's look at the construction photos. You're going to see a constant trend, okay? Constant trend where you're going to see this kind of like scaffolding around the structure already built i'm calling bs like this is so obvious and you know like these are big events back then photography wasn't like you know something that just they just kind of pulled out their camera and took photos right like they had a plan for this so notice right like you type in salt lake city right they'll the learn the history of salt lake city and the first thing you get is wikipedia showing you a photo of the construction of salt lake temple why would they do that why because that's the first thing they want you to see they want you to think that we built that in the 1800s and 1900s whatever it doesn't it, it, it that is a very old temple it's a magnificent temple and guess what I'm going to assume that it has something to do with the story that John Smith, right? Like, look at this little pretty boy, John Smith and his buddies. You really think they, they built this temple? You're telling me they didn't know. Again, guys, this is BS. They're telling you in the story who built these temples. You just have to be smart enough to put it together. Okay. These construction photos are fake. You will never find solid construction photos of them showing you how they create stone dome type architectures or even doing huge pillars you're not gonna see it okay you're gonna see these scaffoldings and maybe they rebuilt the top of like the little steeples because like what I think they do is they actually take these things down they've taken them down so many times that they've kind of figured out to an extent how to rebuild those parts but they definitely have no idea how to create those base stone foundations and the reason why is because it's based on all this old antiquitech that they still have not figured out how to do which says a lot it really does says so much
All right, I want to give a shout out to Tech Dancer. We're going to move on to the next section, which is Mysterious Illuminations of the 18th and 19th centuries. I mean, this is a really awesome article because, like, I just think it ties in with everything that we're talking about, okay? I did not know... What's so fascinating about this is the idea that in the past, right, we've gone over all sorts of types of inventions and different technologies that the ancients were thinking about. And let's, let's ask this question. Do we think that eventually the ancients were like, when they were building all these big temples and they were building their big cities, eventually they were like, how can we start to light up the night, right? That's going to be an obvious question that's going to start to be brought, you know, brought up and so the first thing obviously is going to be fire right but we know that that wouldn't work of after time right so they would have to elevate that idea and that's what i think this is is these illuminations are not fire based and they are some kind of invention of you know it could be mercury based it could be purely some type of device that's producing enough heat to have an illumination and the way that it's producing this heat is through some type of mechanism that we don't understand you know and there's a lot of different depictions of this i really really appreciate this blog because it's like all this ties in once you see the bigger picture you know what i mean and then you're going to see all these different devices right on the top that we're going to see similar trends Okay, so what I take from this is that they had the ability to light all these structures on a grand scale. And this is not fire. Again, this is not fire. This is some type of glowing chemical reaction that they would, you would use for huge events. And I think there's a reason why we're not told about this. There's a reason. And again, here's something different. Vases. Okay. So these vases would glow to produce light. So again, it's just different ideas and different ways that they thought of creating light. I think it's just a, another piece of the puzzle on an understanding of who the ancients really were, what they were capable of. You know, I don't think our imagination is really... Um, up to par to what the truth and the reality of the situation is. I think we would be astounded and in amazement to truly understand what these ancients were capable of doing. All right, so now we're going to move on into free energy. And I think this is where I'm going to lose a lot of you guys, but it really isn't that crazy if we just hang on there and honestly just open our minds a little bit because it's like, why has this been a constant theme throughout history? You know, we've always, you know, constantly have tried to invent some type of mechanism that could, you know, be based on free energy. And you can't even really go and fill a patent out now on any type of free energy device. So that's how ridiculous this is. Okay, so I get it. I know I, I can see the comments. All right, I get it. But I, I don't care because it's like, what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand some really out there, you know, far out stuff. And I think that in order to do that, we have to venture out of our cosmology. We have to venture out of how we perceive reality. And I think one of those things could be free energy, magnetism, perhaps even anti-gravity. I mean, all these concepts could really help explain the mystery of Tartaria, the mystery of the ancients, the mystery of the pyramids. We don't understand how the ancients did some of the things they did. And it's like, remember some of the engravings at the beginning of the video. It's like, we don't imagine biblical days like that. We don't imagine them having these architectural buildings, or at least I did not I'm sure some people, once they've done the research, they, you know, they could tell the obvious, but it's like, I don't think we're taught this in school. The reason is, is because free energy isn't marketable. Let's forget about the corporation aspect of it or even trying to generate money from it. I think it goes back to a cosmology, okay? The idea of free energy shows you that there's a God. 
that's the idea. I mean, think about the people who were generating these types of technology, right? They were very spiritual. They were the basis of all our religions, right? So I'll get back to the free energy, but before we go to that, let's finish up with these out of place mansions, elegant, fancy art and strange fireplaces. So what we know is the Gilded Age is just some propaganda for all these Phoenician buildings, right? The traditional story is the economy was booming. And so a bunch of these millionaires started building these mansions all over America, right? Mark Twain wrote about it, propaganda. Okay. So it says that a lot, if we, if we look online, we'll find that it says these were built in 10 to 20 years. And again, we'll see that there's no construction photos or we'll just see scaffolding. I think Conspiracy RS has a really great video that explains that whole idea. But I wanted to bring it up because of these fireplaces, right? Or what I think are advanced heating systems of the past, right? So again, let's bring up the Temple of Solomon. So the Phoenicians are building these modern day huge ass temples okay so now let's ask a question it gets cold how are they going to heat these places up they don't want to obviously how to build fires in there right we, we've seen a lot of uh, different types of technologies okay now we're getting into something that is going to make a lot of sense now that we know all the things we know these fireplaces were some type of heating system that worked based off of metal plates and some type of device that is found in all these fireplaces. So the connection here is that these mansions have these huge fireplaces that just don't make sense, right? First of all, they're way too huge, okay? They'll usually have like a painting right where the heat is coming out of the fireplace, right? So that doesn't sound like a good idea. That doesn't make sense. And the whole idea of a chimney is not really smart, right? Like the hot air is going up, leaving all, uh, leaving the house colder, right? And it's only going to be warm right next to the fire, right? When you look at these buildings, I mean, the living rooms are huge, right? And then you're going to have gatherings of a lot of people. So they needed some other way to heat up this house. And it was not fireplaces. Let me tell you that it, or it wasn't burning wood. Okay. So we'll see these strange devices okay that look very similar to what i was showing in the book of mormonism right the ball on the cross and like i was saying throughout the video is that this device is a basis of a, probably a lot of different types of technologies but this one specifically right it's some type of magnet or some type of advanced device made from copper and mercury where the magnetic properties allow the machine to kind of work on its own. Maybe it takes solar energy or maybe just the fact of the chemical reaction on its own. It starts to, you know, generate electricity. And when we found these mechanisms, we kind of forgot or lost the, the way to use them. Right. So I don't fully understand just yet how they applied all these different things to stonemasonry, how they lifted the stones, how they did certain feats, but we can speculate, right? Uh, it's possible that they could heat up these rooms with these devices. And the way they would do it is that these two positive and negative type devices that uh, were magnetic in nature would generate heat. And that in turn would generate the plates that are find, found in these fireplaces that would heat up to a point where now we're having hot air that's kind of coming into the room instead of burning wood and the chemicals, right? They also integrated these types of devices on top of the buildings. I've said that a couple times. And maybe it's because they could turn these uh, temples into energy charging devices to charge their different, you know, their, their different inventions. They needed light. They needed heat. What else could they have possibly used? Could they have talking tell like could they have talking statues right could they have different telephones different mechanisms for communicating well which brings me back to what i was saying on the book of natural magic and that there was a device that created sound throughout the city right or had some type of energy that was emitted so everybody was affected by it right 
And there's this video on Conspiracy RS called Waste Management. It is super relevant right now. But they did not have bathrooms in all these different temples. And I'm just going to start the base for a really awesome video later. But I believe, or I'm speculating, that they figured out a way to magnetize their atmosphere, right? And their cities. And what this did was it had an effect on the human body. Once you've looked into the cold enough, I mean, this makes sense. And so this magnetism was spread throughout the atmosphere or this energy, right? Or this sound. And I believe that this literally made us like gods, you could say. Meaning like we had longer lives. That's what we hear in the Bible, right? The first families, the first civilizations, they had longer lives. What if we didn't poop? I know that sounds freaking crazy. Go watch that go watch that waste management video and then you'll see what I'm talking about. So we're starting to see the bigger picture, right? We have some type of explanation on who may have created these buildings, how they were created. And now it's not so crazy to just talk about Tartaria, right? It's not just some crazy conspiracy where, you know, I've believed my whole life the kind of traditional story that America is teaching through their school systems meaning like i never questioned where these cities came from but it's like now with the bigger picture kind of present we can we can actually go to this cosmology we can actually try to understand whoa whoa like this I, this is actually might have happened you know what i mean like there was a history that was completely different than what we're um considering it to be to what we believe it to be which it's just not the case history is not what we believe it to be there is so much more to look at and so much more to really kind of break down but i'm going to finish off with saying or asking the question what happened right because like in the last video i was saying that tartaria was destroyed by some comet or black magic which is completely possible but in my next video, I want to talk about a completely alternative view that really makes me question what's to come. You know, it makes me question the nature of consciousness and how we advance as civilization. And whether or not this whole Tartaria destruction was deliberate or not. Or was it a part of constant resets that have been happening over and over again throughout human history. I think there's just so much more to this. Um, maybe Rome did us a favor. That's another video that I'm planning on doing. Maybe we wanted to stop the deluge from happening ever again. Well, we'll find out soon and we'll soon awaken to the truth, guys. Thanks for watching. And I know this might have gone fast and all over the place, but there's just so much to cover. I'm just trying to lay a foundation. Leave me a comment and let me know if there's anything I should go over. I appreciate all you guys and until next time. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?